Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today we continue our celebration of Easter and the wonderful news of his resurrection. The good news is that Jesus defeated death. He opened the grave and he rose to life again. And that is certainly important and joyous news for us. And yet as important as that is today, we, well, we also hear of another kind of opening that Jesus did that's just as important as the opening of the grave. And that is when Jesus opened the minds of his disciples, opened his, their minds so that they could understand the Scripture. And this too, brothers and sisters, is good news. For without this opening, that open tomb would have been of no benefit. They needed their minds open to the word of God in order to believe and to understand the good news of the open tomb. Now that kind of open-mindedness of which Scripture here speaks is, well, it's very different from what our world thinks and values as being open-minded. To the world, this means to be open to all kinds of thinking, all opinions, all views. That there is no one truth, but that we need to be open to all sorts of different interpretations, different judgments. To be open-minded is to open your mind and let all sorts of things come and fill it. All kinds of worldly wisdom, all kinds of enlightened thinking, all kinds of newly discovered truths. But the result of this kind of open-mindedness is that our minds, our minds resemble more of a landfill, a cesspool, because all of those little nuggets of worldly wisdom have been dumped into, mixed and mingled, allowed to ferment together, yielding confusion, yielding doubt. We know not what to believe. In fact, we say with Pilate, what is truth? That seems to be the kind of confusion that, that gripped the disciples after Jesus' crucifixion and death. For when he appeared to them, they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit and doubts arose in their hearts. And when it says that doubts arose in their hearts, it means that, that their hearts were stirred up. That's literally the image that the, the text is to give us. You might think of, of muddy water that gets stirred up, or, or even a pot of stew that, that you move the ladle around and all sorts of things bubble up from the surface. Here. All that stuff that filled their minds all the things that had settled down to the bottom, well, they started to get stirred up in that horrible weekend. They clouded their thinking. Things were not clear for them anymore. All kinds of thoughts, ideas, worldly wisdom that had been stirred up in their heads, they didn't know what to think or believe. Could someone live after he died? Was Jesus who he said he was? Why didn't God save him? this be a real body? They were confused. They were confused just as so many in our world today are confused. And so Jesus comes to them and he opens their minds. He opens their minds not to let more junk in, but instead to clear out the junk, to fill their minds instead with his word. To clean out that cesspool of filth and falsehood and fear, all kinds of wrong thinking, wrong ideas, and instead to fill their minds with his truth and with his wisdom. For only he can open the tombs of our minds and fill them with the light of his word and truth, filled with repentance, faith, and forgiveness, that we may know him that we may believe in him, that we may be saved.
And this is what the risen Christ is still doing today, here in this church. The epistle today calls us children of God. And what a beautiful and, and right picture this is of us and of our relationship with the Heavenly Father. For we are all God's children, regardless of age. We are children born of the Word and the water of holy baptism, born again to a new life we are joined to the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And through water and the Spirit, the tombs of our minds are open and are filled with the truth of the risen Christ. And this is not done just once, but over and over again as repentance and faith in these things, in the daily contrition, we return to that one baptism. Clean out the junk of this world. To be absolved of our wrong, sinful thoughts, words, deeds, our sinful desires. And instead to be filled, to be renewed with the truth, the love and the clarity of Christ's life and love. But then something else happens too. For after God first acts and we receive, then we act. For just as children learn how to speak by being spoken to, and learn how to act by imitating their parents, so too do we as children of God. And so after the opening and the cleansing out of our minds, after the opening and the cleansing of the minds of the disciples and filling them then with truth, Jesus calls all those who believe in him eyewitnesses and sends them to speak of what they have seen, to speak of what they believe. These disciples are going to be sent with his Holy Spirit to speak as they have been spoken to, to love as they have been loved, to forgive as they have been forgiven, and thus to open minds that are filled with confusion and doubt, minds filled with sin and death, and open those minds that the light of Christ's cleansing forgiveness might shine on all. And yet this is not their work. It is the work of the Spirit, the promise of the Father given to them, who works through the words they speak. Now, it must be said, though, that not all worldly wisdom is, is bad. God has blessed many people in our world across time with, with great intellects, with great minds, and through their work and the carrying out of their various vocations, we have received many great things. In fact, we've received these things from God. Great advances in medicine, in technology, in communication, and so many other things that enrich our daily lives. And for all these things, we indeed rightly and truly give thanks to God. But with the good has come the bad. As man abuses the good things that God gives to him. And so now has come false wisdom, false gods, false truths of the prince of this world. All this falsehood that clouds heart and mind and deceives us, misleads us into false belief, into despair, into other great shame and vice. And so there is another wisdom with which our minds must be filled, a higher wisdom that rules all earthly wisdom, that we know what is true and what is false, what is good, what is not what is godly, and what must be left aside. And that is through the wisdom of Christ and his word. And so here it is for you. Here he is in this place to fill you with his gifts, to forgive your doubt, and to give you peace. To fill you with his life-giving body and blood that having here received, you go and live 
And with his life, with his spirit, with his words, with his truth, with his love and with his forgiveness, the spirit of Christ is working now through you as you speak his words, the words he has spoken to you, opening and filling hearts and minds. And with his words, by him and faith in his name, opening heaven to all. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.